started. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a wonderful morning of Chem 1105 with your host, me, Dr. White. Boy, I'm in a good mood. Got a good night's sleep, which always helps. And I have my blueberry tea. I have my blueberry top. Look out, it's Dangerous Humor Tuesday. All right, let me remind you, hand in the lab that was that's due today, hand it in. If you have trouble doing the lab that's due today, see me after lab today, I'll help. Remember, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Also, something I have mentioned, I never judge a student based on a score or points on anything you hand in. It has nothing to do with who you are. Remember, I don't judge you by the grade you're getting in my class. That's a fact. All right, listen up. Today's lab, because the way I set up the lab schedule to fit everything in and have some fun labs for you, uh, I moved some stuff where I was cutting corners. And so this is one of the two times, the other one was last week with the gas law. I'm gonna jump ahead in the lecture stuff and move a little quicker on some parts. And then tomorrow and part of Friday and next week, I'll come back to this stuff. We'll have plenty of time, but this gets me, uh, allows you to learn stuff for the lab you're gonna do today. Also, don't forget on Friday, I will go through the solutions problem set. That's chapter five, part two. It's in your benefit, you. I already know this stuff and I do real good on my tests. Like I get a hundred or actually 105 because there'll be five bonus points. But if you want to get a good score on the test, it means getting a good grade in this class, do the practice problems. All right. Now, what we're going to do today is I uncover some important material from assets and bases. I'm going to skip over what I did yesterday, conjugate bases and assets, the conjugates. We'll come back to that. Trust me, I'm a chemist. Does that work? How about trust me, I'm a doctor. Does that work? How about trust me, I'm a PhD chemist. Does that work? Trust me. But anyways, we'll skip over some stuff to get the important stuff you need to know for today's lab. And then we'll do the lab and I'll let you run away, or in your case, log off away. All right, let's get to work. Now, I was talking about acids and bases. And remember for a bronsted lorry base, it is a proton donor. It gives up H plus. That's an acid. From now on, if I say acid, I mean bronsted lorry acid. And most chemists, when they say that, that's what they mean. There are some other definitions of acids in special cases, which we will not cover. And truthfully, in all the years I've been doing organic chemistry, bronsted lorry acid-based theory is the only one I've needed, even though I do know the other ones. So you should know, bronsted lorry acid, proton donor, Ronsted Lori base, proton acceptor, proton H plus. So acid, proton donor, base, proton acceptor. Now, if you go out and walk around our world today, you'll see some people are stronger than others. Well, guess what? The same thing is true for acids and bases. If I'm an acid, here's my proton, I'm donating it to you, but I can be a strong acid or a weak acid. And those exist. Same thing with a base, I'm a base. Come on, give me your proton, I want it. And there are people who are more aggressive than others. Well, it turns out with acids and bases, the same is true with bases. There are strong bases and weak bases. Let's learn about them. I should say, you should learn about it because I already know. Oh, look out, it's dangerous humor day. 
right, now a strong acid, and I'm not gonna ask you this on a test, but it's good to know the rest of your life, is a substance that transfers nearly 100% or very nearly 100% of its protons to water. Now, it says, see the equilibrium on the board. Guess what? I'm gonna write it on here. And if we had an acid, plus water, and this has, think of this as H plus and A minus. And notice I put a quotes there, think of it. Equilibrium is mostly this way. And let's see how tiny an arrow it can go back. And what happens is you get A minus plus H3O plus. This has donated the proton to that. So strong acids do this. Now, what are examples of strong acid? Now, in organic chemistry, we use the letter X for halogen. So strong acids, and again, this is not going to be on a test, but you should learn this for your rest of your life. This is one, this is X, this is X, and this is X. These are all very strong. And in your stomach, you have hydrochloric acid. Yes. And other strong acids. This is a very strong acid. And this is a very strong acid. They essentially do the following. I'm an acid, I've got my proton, take it. You don't have a choice. And that's a strong acid. Why am I informed today? Look out. So these are strong acids. They donate almost 100% of their proton to water. Now they're weak acids that say, oh, I'm not gonna give up my proton. I'm an acid. This is a weak acid. And I'll give up a little, but most of the time, no, I'm just gonna. Oh, that looks awful. Let's try that again. and says, oh, I'm just a weak acid. Would you like my proton? Oh, if you don't want it, that's okay. But here, do you want it? That's a weak acid. And what's an example of that? Weak acid only gives up about five or less percent of its protons. And the most important example is acetic acid. Again, this won't be on a test. And where do you find acetic acid? In vinegar. Next time you happen to taste vinegar, do you feel a need to go to the hospital? Do you feel in serious pain? No, because it's a weak acid. Plus it's dilute. It's only 4% acetic acid in water. So dilute acetic acid is safe to use. By the way, acids, weak acids have a sour taste. And another weak acid is called citric acid, which is the acid that's in lemons and limes. In limes, there's more citric acid than in lemons, which is why if you bite into a, a lemon, you go, whoa, that's sour. If you bite into a lime, it's yeah, sort of sour, but not as much as a lemon. And that's because the, there's more of the weak acid, a, a citric acid in lemons than limes. See all the neat stuff you're learning about your daily life and chemistry? All right.
Now, strong bases are mainly groups of atoms, hydroxides. Hydroxide is OH minus. Again, switches off for this one. And the most common strong bases are sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. You use those and they say, give me your proton. I'm a base. You don't have a choice. Give it to me. And the old names for sodium hydroxide is lye and potassium hydroxide is potash. Now, how does potassium hydroxide get a uh, name, KOH, potassium hydroxide, potash? Because where was it first found? In the ashes of wood underneath your cooking pot. Years ago, back in the, I don't know, 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, 1700s, 1800s. I don't know when they stopped using a big pot over a fire or cooking meat over a fire where you have a rotisserie, not really like, you know, you just turn it a little. You've seen it in all the movies. Well, the fat and other chemicals, water would drip down into the wood. And in the wood, they were able to define potassium hydroxide. And it got the name potash because it was the ashes underneath the pot. All right, so these are strong bases. Now, a weak base is sodium bicarbonate, which I didn't write the name. Which you know as baking powder, which we'll be using in today's lab. And this is a weak base, which is why we can use it in cooking. Now, other weak bases are the conjugate bases of strong acids. I'll give you an example. Again, this will not be on the test. Now, sulfuric acid is a very, very strong acid. And in water, this happens. And here, this is the conjugate of sulfuric acid. And going to the left, this would be a base. And conjugate bases of strong acids are weak base. And therefore, this is called bisulfate anion is a very weak base. It says, oh, maybe, can you think about giving me a proton? I'd like it, but if you don't want it, that's okay. It's a weak base. Now, important thing about water. Water is, first of all, an amazing chemical. I bet. You didn't think about the stuff in this bottle. No, it's not vodka, it's water, it is a chemical. Yes, it is, H2O. You think of it, oh, this is just water, but it's a chemical. Most people don't make that connection, but water is a chemical and it's an amazing chemical. And one of the things about water is it can react with itself. I don't know why that dot's there, hold on. That's better. And if you take two water molecules, there's an equilibrium. Remember, double arrow means going back and forth at the same rate. And water can react to it itself, but the equilibrium is just a little, which is why I have a little arrow there, to the right. But it forms the hydronium ion.
and you should know this name, and hydroxide. ion and you should know that name and this is important it plays a major role in our life this equilibrium water reacting with itself and this is called dissociation of water and there's a constant called the ionization constant kw named after me no i wish it was this was long and established before I was ever born. And the ionization constant for water is the hydronium ion concentration times the hydroxide. When you put a chemical or a number in brackets in chemistry, in an equation, that means concentration, and it really means molarity. Moles of H3O plus per 1,000 milliliters. And the same thing here. And this number, which is also sometimes I should have written as 1.0, is for water at room temperature, which is 25 degrees C. I believe that's 77 degrees Fahrenheit approximately. And we'll come back to this. But this is an important aspect of this acids and bases. And I'll come back to this tomorrow and also next week because you should know how to use this. The past students have to memorize this. This will be given to you important information, test number four. Remember this is test number four material. Now, I think I asked this yesterday, but I'll ask it again and give me a thumbs up if you'd like to, or better yet, I'm gonna use a poll. How many of you have ever heard the term acidic, basic, or neutral? Ooh, that's acidic or that's basic or that's neutral. And answer yes for even though the question says, are you done? But have you heard about acidic, basic, the words acidic, basic or neutral other than me just saying it? And the votes are rolling in. And it looks like the majority of you have, but if you haven't, I'm going to teach you about it. Now, acidic, you might hear someone say, you know, your stomach liquids or juices, I don't know why they call it juices, but your stomach, the liquids in your stomach, the contents of your stomach, that sounds more professional, is acidic. If you look at a bottle of ammonia, which is really ammonia and water, that you buy in the supermarket, that's basic. Your blood, yes, acids and bases play a role in your blood. Let's see, there's a better blood. Can you see that? Well, anyways, as you can see my blood vessels is very close or almost at neutral. I'll explain why I did that in a second, maybe five seconds. So what's this acidic? What's this basic and what's this neutral? Switches on for this slide. Now, acidic solution, what is that? That's a solution in which the concentration of the hydronium ion concentration is higher than the concentration of the hydroxide. And one way to show that is the concentration of the hydronium H3O is greater than hydroxide. And when that happens, we call that acidic. 
And now you can go home and tell your friends, neighbors, and loved ones, if you're not at home, if you are, you can still tell them that, you know, your stomach's acidic because the hydronium ion concentration in your stomach is greater than the hydroxide. And by the way, this is only true for things in water. But most of the things we do with acid bases are in water, not all, but most. So acidic solution, hydronium ion concentration, H3O plus concentration is greater than hydroxide. For those who forgot, this symbol means means greater than in math right here. Now, what's a basic solution? A basic solution is a solution in which the hydroxide concentration, OH minus, is higher than the hydronium ion concentration, H3O plus. And by the way, this is sometimes called an alkaline solution. And I'll come back to this in a second. So what's a basic solution? That's when the hydroxide ion concentration is greater than the hydronium ion concentration. And this is the condition for a basic solution. Now, I said I'd talk about alkaline or alkaline, some people pronounce it. How many of you have ever heard of alkaline batteries? Well, originally when they had batteries and they still do in your car, the inside had acid in there to make electricity, which is what a battery does. And guess what? They found out years later, they perfected ways of making better batteries that instead of inside the battery, it was acidic, it was basic. And that's how batteries got the name alkaline batteries. And let's do a quick go out into the real world. And here you see the Energizer Bunny. No, I'm not going to get my drum out and start beating it. And here you have a whole thing on Wikipedia. And notice, because it has potassium hydroxide instead of acidic materials in there. And that makes for a quote unquote better battery. And since then they've come up with other types of batteries. All right, well, if acidic solution is the hydronium ion concentration is greater than the hydroxide, and basic solution is the hydroxide concentration, OH minus, is greater than hydronium ion concentration, what is a neutral solution? Well, that is a solution which the hydroxide and the hydronium ion concentrations are equal. Turn on your mic, please turn, turn it off. Thank you, Spencer. <laughs> all right, and thank you for all of you for being good on keeping your mics off. When I first started doing Zoom, I didn't realize when everybody with their mics on, anybody walks behind you, you change your position on your chair, whatever noise, <laughs> multiply that by 15, 20, and I've had class of 48, it's a lot of background noise and I learned to set the mic off and also ask people to do that. So a neutral solution exists when the hydronium ion concentration is equal to the hydroxide. So let's review this. 
And this is something you should know. For an acidic solution, the hydronium ion concentration is greater than the hydroxide concentration. For a basic solution, the hydroxide solution, OH minus, is greater than, that's what the symbol I just wrote, than the hydronium ion concentration, H3O plus. And that's a basic solution. And for a neutral solution, The hydronium ion constant H3O plus is equal to the hydroxide concentration OH minus. So acidic hydronium greater than hydroxide. When hydroxide is greater than hydronium, it's basic. And when they're equal, it's a neutral solution. Oh, I forgot to be subtle. Get the message. I just thought about it when I write it like that. It's sort of like me yelling at you, know this. And I am. All right. Now, if you think about it, say you had two numbers. The hydronium is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3, and the hydroxide is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 11. Is this bigger or smaller? Which is that? That's hard. That hurts my brain, ouch. Well, guess what? Chemists came up with a better way of determining that that's easier to use. And that better way is called the pH concept. Oh, I know what I have to do. Just out of curiosity, and no, curiosity won't kill Dr. White, it might decap and uh-oh, that was awful humor Tuesday again. That's not what I wanted. Even though the question asks, are you done? Answer, yes, you've heard about pH. No, you have not. I'm going to have some blueberry tea. I see a lot of you have. Well, let's talk about it. Now, pH is a scale, or the pH concept, the pH scale is a scale of more small numbers that's used to specify the molar hydronium ion concentration in, this is important, aqueous meaning, in aqueous solution where there's water. pH doesn't work if there's no water. I've had people, oh, look at this results. I said, you're not in an aqueous solution. Why are you doing that? But anyways, what is pH? By definition, pH is minus the log of the hydronium ion concentration. Now, first of all, I better be subtle again. Of all the things I'm going to cover this semester, 
for you personally in your private life, the rest of your life, this is probably the most important thing I'll teach you. All right, now pH is minus the log of the hydronium ion concentration. Now, first of all, relax. I'm gonna give you a special gift in a second, but let's talk about log or otherwise known as logarithms. Oh. What is a log or logarithm in math? If I said just a log, well, that's something I put in my fire after I cut it down to smaller size. But anyways, my fireplace, I should say. Now, the log of X is what power of X equals what power 10 to the Y power or sometimes z times 10 to the y power would equal x. So the log of 1,000 would be 10, yeah. <laughs> oh. would be 3. And your calculator can do this log of 100. What power? And you could all, uh, this would be two. Another way of writing that is the log And if this number in front is one, then the log is the power of 10. In this case, again, two. Now, what about this? Oops, got ahead of myself. Now, what's X or what's Y? It's minus four. So this would be minus four. Now, the minus the log of this, relax, you won't have to learn any of this I'm going through, but in case you want the background. What's minus minus four would be four, the number four. So this is logarithm, this is minus logarithm. So if you look at these examples, for this one right here, now let me use a different letter. And here's my special gift to you. If we look at this, the log of Q, and Q is 1.0 times 10 to the minus X, which would be minus the log of 1.0 times 10 to the minus X. When this is 1.0, the answer here is X. Again, when this is 1.0, and this is the number we use, and it's minus x, then the log minus the log of that number is x. And this is my special gift to you. And why? Because if the hydronium ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus x, the pH is x. So let's have some fun with logs and pH.
right, I'll do this one five points. What is the pH of a solution? By the way, I don't have it here. It doesn't look that way, but it's always small p, capital H. If the hydronium ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus fifth. So what are we trying to find? pH. What are we given? And you will be given on test number four, the past I had students memorize this. You'll be given all this I just highlighted. So pH is minus the log of the hydronium ion concentration. And if H3O plus hydronium ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the minus X, then the pH is X. So I can write here, pH equal minus the log, oops. <laughs> of the hydronium ion concentration, which we have right here. So I'll put it in. And when the number in this minus log is 1.0 times 10 to the minus X, in this case, X is five, then the pH is five. And that's how you do it. Oh, let me have you try one. And by the way, pH is always a number from zero to 14, which I'll talk about. And why don't you try this one? B, what is the pH of a solution if the hydronium ion concentration H3O plus is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 11? And use my special gift. You don't even have to use your calculator. By the way, your calculators can do logarithms, but I don't want to teach that. I'm lazy. Actually, I could, but this is easier for you. That's my gift to you. And now I will ask, are you done yet? All right, I think everybody's done. So I'm gonna get to work. So what are we being asked to find pH? What are we given? The hydronium ion concentration H3O plus is equal 1.0 times 10 to the minus 11. And from important information, pH equal minus the log of the hydronium ion concentration. I'll put that in. And when this is 1.0, which will be on my test and final, and this is 10 to the minus X, this whole thing here minus the log of that number is equal to X, which in this case is 11. And that's how you do pH with Dr. White's gift. Now, wow, I even wrote it, important. The pH is always a range from zero to 14. The lower the pH, the more acidic it is. That means hydronium 
is greater than hydroxide. The higher the pH, the more basic it is. Now, and this is a logarithmic scale, which means each number differs from the other by a power of 10. pH 5 and pH 4 is not this one, that's a difference in 10, power of one, 10 to the one power, 10 in concentration. That's a big difference. So even though there are small number differences, pH say six to three, that's a thousand times difference. So pH is a logarithmic scale, not just a direct numeric scale. Now, I have a slide and I can't find it right now. I'll have it tomorrow. But this is probably the most important thing I will teach you this semester. And you should know this, and I'll write it in a second. pH scale goes from zero to 14. At pH seven, we call that a neutral solution. Or just neutral. Below seven, it's acidic. And this is why pH is easier to use than is the hydronium or hydroxide greater? When the pH is above seven, we call that a basic or alkaline solution. I like using the term basic solution. The stronger the acid, the closer to zero the pH is in water. The stronger the base something is, the closer to four, to excuse me, 14 the pH is. And when you're at seven, you're at neutral pH. Now, important thing, your blood has a pH of about seven, give or take a tenth of a point, about that. If it goes way outside that range, you're dead, you'll die. In fact, there's a great movie called Andromeda Strain, and not the newer one, the older first one made from the 1960s. If you haven't seen it, awesome movie, and it deals with the key of that, I won't give it away, but I will, the pH of the blood. And it's a fantastic movie, not the remake, ich, ich, ich. you go to see the original. So pH is important. All right, thumbs up, people. Do you see on your screen the pH scale in pretty technicolor? Thank you, Spencer and everybody else. And let's look at some common things. If you look, your stomach has a pH one. Remember at seven, it's neutral. Below seven, it's acidic. The closer to zero, the more acidic it is. Above seven, it's basic. The, Closer to 14, the more basic it is. And notice here, they got lazy. They just put H plus instead of H3O plus, which really they should have. But anyways, let's look at some stuff. Vinegar, which has is a dilute solution. You know what dilute solution is of acetic acid, has a pH of three. Now, lime, lemons, which are more acidic, meaning more sour, there's more what we call citric acid. Now I said hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and notice its pH is about zero for depending on the concentration. And notice they have the little flask there. Let's see if I can get a bigger picture. I can. With, with the, <laughs> this is lethal skeleton on there. But anyways, 
and your blood, they have pH 8, it's really closer to 7. Uh, baking powder, which is a, or soda, both are similar sodium bicarbonate, but there's some difference, has a slightly basic pH. Ammonia is really basic at 11. Your soap is usually closer to 11 than 12, that's bar soap. And drain cleaner, now there are two types of drain cleaner. I'll teach you more about that when we get into organic chemistry, but some are basic, but most of them are actually HCl. And so some are basic, some are acidic. And water, theoretically, pure water has a pH of seven. Guess what? The stuff that comes out of your uh, tap or sink in your house whether bathroom, kitchen, or whatever, is not pH 7. And if I look at the clock, let's take a five-minute break. You'll be out of here by 1030, if not sooner. Shh, don't tell anybody I'm being nice. But afterward, we'll talk a little more about pH, and then we'll do a Beyond Lab, Dr. White Lab, not Beyond Lab Z. It'll be my own lab. And we're going to be dealing with some real dangerous chemicals like ketchup, mustard, tomato paste, dangerous stuff, even vinegar. So take a five minute break, come back at uh, 9.50, that's actually five and a half minutes, and I'll see you in five minutes. I can get up and stretch. See you in five.
Time to start again. By the way, about an hour and a half. What? <laughs> no, it's starting now. Anyways, in case you're wondering, back when I was in collecting whistles back in high school, this used to be the whistle that the doormen and hot um, hotels use to call taxi cabs. And they go out, blow their whistle, and there'd be a line of tax cabs, and the next one in front of the line would come and pick up the passengers. All right, let's get back to pH. Now, as you saw, pH is a scale, and there are many things that are below seven acidic. Example, coffee, wine. What you don't see here, which is acidic, is ketchup, mustard, and pickles. They all come in vinegar or have vinegar in them, which is acidic. Now, when you add acid to something that's neutral, it becomes more acidic, the pH drops. When you add base to water as neutral, the pH increases, it becomes more basic. I'll say that again. When you add, let me go to a color. When you add acid, if you start at pH seven, the pH decreases. When you add a base, and you're at pH seven, the pH will increase. The greater the increase, the more basic. The other way, the closer to zero, the more acidic a solution is. Now, important thing, pH goes from zero to 14. Never less than zero, never greater than 14. And when I was a senior manager at one company that was Axo Nobel, I had a chemist come in who had a master's degree in chemistry, and he gave me a report before reports are issued and the same in all chemical companies. The manager has to review it and literally sign off on it so it can be issued. And that way you're saying, I've read it, it's a good report and I'm putting my name behind it. Well, I read the report and I called them in. <laughs> I looked at them and by the way, this is the dark side of Dr. White, the manager side. I said, I asked them quite frankly, do you enjoy working here? And he said, yeah, why? I said, here's this report. If you ever give me a report where the pH is less than zero, which it was, I'm going to fire you. And he looked at me like that. And I said, we do everything. Now, there was ways of measuring pH. One is what's called the pH meter. And what he did do was calibrated properly. And he should have known that pH less than zero. Come on, it, it can't be. And that's why I got upset at him real quick. Oh, did he get the message? Uh, I rarely do that, but that got me really fired up. And pH is never greater than 14. Now there's another way of measuring pH, what's called pH paper. It's a strip of paper that has a chemical on there that changes color based on the pH of the solution. And it's always an aqueous water solution. You take a little, put it on the paper, and you hold it to scale. All right, does everybody see on their screen on the left, hydrin, hydrion, I always call it hydrin, and that's pH paper in this roll. Here's the pH paper, it's in foil, but it's a strip of paper. And afterward, you put the 
solution to test. And if it's this color like zero, that's pH zero. If it's the color sort of a, a, a greenish color, light green, it's six. If it's dark blue, it's four, 13 or higher. And this is how you can quickly measure pH. If you own a swimming pool, which I did when I bought this house, which in two years I got rid of it, because one, Chicagoland swimming season is very limited. And two, I'm not a big pool person. So it was above ground, luckily and I tore it down. But you have to measure the pH of the water in the pool. One, if it's too hot, low or high, it will irritate your eyes. Two, it will help with, if it's not the right pH, grow certain things you don't want growing in your swimming pool. And there are other chemicals you put in there. All right, so this is pH. And it's an important thing. Let's look one more thing if I can find it. Hopefully you all saw that. I, yep, you did. And if you look on your screen, the normal pH is in a very narrow, slightly basic, but 7.35 to 7.45. Now, I don't know what it's called. Well, here it is. If your pH is lower than 7.35, they call that acidosis. If it's greater than 7.45, they call that alkalosis. And I've heard of acidosis, a lot of people are alcoholics and others suffer from acidosis. And if you get your pH too low of your blood, you can die or too high, I guess, too. All right. So you should know the scale. Uh, tomorrow, I'll see if not, I'll make up a new one that looks a little nicer than this, but you, this will not will not be an, an important information. This is something you need to memorize. And as I said, this will not be in important information, test number four or the final. This is probably one of the most important things this whole semester I will teach you. We've done some pH practice time and Guess what time it is? It's lab time. And today's lab will be a Beyond Lab Dr. White lab, which means you won't be using Beyond Lab Z. And what's today's lab? It's doing chemistry with food. And let me make sure. All right, thumbs up people. Do you see it on your screen? doing chemistry with food. Thank you, Amber. All right, let's go through this lab. And this is available for you to download on Blackboard. All items that you find in your kitchen or supermarket are chemicals or mixtures of chemicals. You can tend to forget that. Yes, chemicals. And the food you eat and the ingredients that you use to make those various foods are contained are composed of atoms which make up molecules. You tend to forget water is made up of hydrogen oxygen atoms in a molecule. Ooh, I'm having it here. What's up? 
And the food you eat, or like I said, and the chemistry that you've learned in this class can be applied to food items in your kitchen. Uh, tomorrow, not today, I'll tell you two great stories about me and acids and bases when I was young. Yes, I was dealing with that when I was young. But anyways, in this lab, you'll be investigating the acidity and basicity of various foods and cooking ingredients. Remember that an acid is a proton donor, a base is a proton acceptor. And when you measure acidity and basicity of a solution, you measure that, we can measure it by measuring the pH of the solution. And as I have already mentioned, if the hydronium ion concentration is greater than the hydroxide, the pH solution is acidic. If the hydroxide greater than hydronium, it's basic. I don't have that on there, but if it's equal, it's neutral. Now, pH helps us quickly determine acidity or basicity of a solution. And as I mentioned earlier today, pH is minus the log of the hydronium ion concentration. If the pH is less than seven, this solution is acidic. If it's greater than seven, it's basic. <clears throat> Excuse me. The pH of a solution can be measured by pH paper. And you saw me show that. You can see using pH paper on this YouTube. I'll let you look at that on your own. Now there's something called neutralization. When you react an acid and a base together, there's a reaction, it's an equilibrium. And what you do is you form a salt and a lot of times you'll also form water. Now, if you look at this HB plus A minus, think of Na plus Cl minus sodium chloride, that's a salt. And these are called salts also not the salt, which is sodium chloride, but in the general term, salts. And this is called a neutralization reaction because if you have something that's acidic and you add base to it, it neutralizes some of the acid and brings you closer to seven. If you have a base and you add acid to it, it neutralizes some of the base and that brings you also closer to seven. Remember, pH 7 is neutral pH. Now, for this one, the first thing you're going to do if we are face-to-face -face at COD would be measure the pH of DI water. Now, deionized water is water that goes through special filters that remove ions like calcium and others, which are in the water that you have in your normal kitchen or bathroom, what we call city water in industry. Now, pH of pure water is 7.0. You're not gonna find pure water. And plus the filters are otherwise known as cartridges. The water goes through to make it deionized water. DI water will affect the pH. And I have students measured this and if you were in the lab, you'd see a pH of 6.7. If I have time, oh, I do. Quick Dr. White story. I uh, worked for this company and they're having some major problems. I think I mentioned it once before slightly at the Toledo plant. And I had to go down to Toledo. Uh, the research center was located here in the Chicagoland area. I flew down to Toledo. Actually, it's easier to go to Detroit and take a drive to Toledo from Detroit, which I did. And I went to the plant and they were having problems with pH of a product. I said, really? All right. And the product had a lot of water in it. So the first thing I asked, which as I said the other day, common sense is not common. Trust me, it's not. I said, they use the water and they're using Toledo City water wasn't deionized because in a chemical plant to deionize water is a lot of money that you don't want to spend if you don't have to. I said, what's the pH of the water? And they gave me this look like, I don't, we don't know. I said, all right, get me some water. And there's a pH meter or you could use pH paper. And the pH of the water 
in the summer in Toledo that day was close to eight. Why? That's probably the worst water I've ever seen in my life at any chemical plant. I said, well, that's your problem. Your pH, your water is not near seven. It's all the way up at eight. It's basic. And that was the problem with the pH. It was higher pH than the product should be. And we added something to neutralize it, bring it closer to seven, and that adjusted it. So don't assume that was the other thing I taught you the other day, and they did, that the water was okay. It doesn't have to be. Just because it's coming out of a tap or wherever you get it doesn't mean it's good. All right, now for the fun part. You're going to react some food with sodium bicarbonate. Remember, sodium bicarbonate is baking powder. And it comes in the little red cans, which is called uh, Calmet baking powder. Uh, the, you can find it sometimes in a yellow, small yellow can with the weird name Gabbler Girl that's made in Indiana. Maybe that's why it's a weird name. No, I shouldn't say that. And they also you can get the house brands. Meyer makes a, a brand. And I'm not sure about Walmart. I haven't looked if they've got a house brand. But anyways, you will be adding small amounts of sodium bicarbonate baking powder to various food items. And after each time and before you begin, you'll measure the pH. Now, let's look at something. I don't know which one of these is better. So let's look at the first one. Oh, what happens when you add vinegar to baking powder? Now, the reaction, I'll teach you this tomorrow, you, one of the products is carbon dioxide, CO2. Okay, take number three. This time, we've got a mixture of one cup vinegar to one cup warm water in a two litre drinks bottle with our launch pad system here. This time, we're putting the baking soda inside a pop sock. Do so not try this at Basically, home. That would mean that the vinegar can get inside the pop sock more easily and it won't get wedged in the uh, end of the bottle when we're about to, when it's about to go off, which should mean the gas gets out more easily. Here we go then. So, cut a little hole in the pop sock there. We're drying out, we should be able to reuse this actually. Very gently, make sure the inside is dry. We're going to feed our bicarb in the pop sock through the gap. Once we've got bit in, we should just be able to gently dip it in through, push it on the down. Right, now we've got the interesting bits. So, put the bottom in the right place, ready to run back very quickly. Launch pads ready with the cork. Here we go. And this is an oh, acid based reaction. Feature. Ready? Three, two, one. Over we go. Run away. A bubble very nicely. Is the acid Pops up looks like it's turned into a balloon. Oh, that's definitely a better delivery method. Look at it goes. Oh. That's very frothy. That's very frothy. Whoa! Oh, success! It's the pop socks. Right, pop socks forever. Wow. Who said you couldn't have fun with chemistry? I can, <laughs> you can too. All right. So what you're going to be doing, if we were face to face, you put some water and put some of the food in a beaker, mix it, and then first of all, you'd measure the pH. Then afterward, and notice the little tilde in front of zero, that's approximate. This is a fun lab. You don't have to really weigh it out. Just add a small amount, like the tip of a spatula, put it in there, mix it for a little while, 
and then measure the pH. Then you'll add some more baking powder. And then step four, you're going to add a whole lot of baking powder and mix it and observe what you see and also what happens to the pH. Now, throw everything away. And for these, for this one, you'll be using vinegar. I don't know why this is. Vinegar and also orange juice, ketchup, tomato paste, lemon juice, and mustard, and Coca-Cola. And if we are in the lab, this is the results you would see. Like for vinegar, the initial pH is about one. And when you add, actually, this shouldn't be just clear. This shouldn't be here. I've made a mistake. But... After you add the pH or add sodium bicarbonate, you'll see bubbles form like you saw in the video. And the pH increase to three. Second edition, bubbles form pH to seven. And then third edition, pH uh, goes up to seven for the third one. And you see this, and by the way, I should take this out. You can delete it. Uh, you'll see bubbles form in Coca-Cola and the pH goes up and up and up. Now, that's sodium bicarbonate. It's a base. The other base you're gonna test and do the same thing is sodium hydroxide, NaOH. And notice we'll be using a 0 0.1 capital M. You know what that means, molar solution of sodium hydroxide. By the way, sodium hydroxide normally is a white solid, but you dilute it in water to make a molar solution, which you can add easier to different things. And you'll first measure the pH of the food item again, and a couple of drops of sodium hydroxide solution, measure the pH, and a couple more, and then add a whole lot more. And you'll measure for here, I got my, it looks better, for vinegar, orange juice, ketchup, tomato, paste, lemon juice, mustard, and coke. And here I've got the right, this is correct, it's just clear. And notice vinegar initially is pH one after the first addition of sodium hydroxide, the pH increases to five, next one it goes up to seven, and the last one it goes all the way up to 13. Very basic. Have you noticed for all these others like tomato paste, be careful, don't get it on your clothes or it'll stain it. That's why it's dangerous. We've used ketchup and mustard. And you see what happens. And finally, oh yes, there are questions that you have to answer. Please make sure you answer all the questions. And here I even tell you, please explain an explanation. Why do you think it's whatever? And same thing here. How do you know this? So that's our lab. And with that, Guess what? I'm done. But before I log off and say goodbye, don't forget, there's a lab due today. Do you have problems doing today's lab that's due today? See me right now, stick around for a couple minutes, or come to my office hour, which will be normal time again tomorrow from 5 to 6.15. Or I might have some time Friday after class, too. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to hand in a lab. I'm here to help. With that, I'm going to say, have a great day. Gang Bye now. I stole that from the Beverly Hillbillies. Bye.